Here we have two examples to evaluate using use substitution, and these are a little more challenging than what we've seen before. So let's start with part A. We have the integral of dx over 1 plus 4x squared. So we're trying to spot a u somewhere in this, such that the integral can be written essentially as f of u, and then we have a u prime somewhere outside of the function. And maybe you initially look at it and say, ah, let's let u be something like x squared. Okay, so is it possible? Maybe we can just say u is x squared. Well, not really, because then du dx is 2x, and there's no other x in here in this integral, right? All we have is a dx. So this doesn't work. What else can we do? Well, this integral looks an awful lot like the integral of dx over 1 plus x squared. And we know that that integral is arctan of x. Okay, so if we kind of keep this in our focus, we can cleverly choose a u to make this work. What if we let, so I'm looking at this 4x squared, what if we let u be 2x? Because then we have our u squared right there to replace 4x squared. Furthermore, once we take the derivative of this, du dx, we don't have an extra x hanging around. du dx is 2, which we can quickly solve for dx is du over 2. Now I plug this dx in up here, up top. So our integral becomes the integral of du over 2. So this 1 half will come out to the front here. And then 1 plus u squared. Right, because if u is 2x, then u squared must be 4x squared. If you really don't like that, you could also solve this quantity for x to get x equals u over 2, and then just plug in directly for x to get rid of the 4 that way. So there's, there's kind of a lot of different ways of looking at this. One way or the other, our integral becomes 1 half integral of du over 1 plus u squared, which we know this is 1 half arctan u plus c. And finally, back substitute is getting pretty involved here, but remember our original u is 2x. So we plug that back in for u, so we get a final answer of 1 half arctan of 2x plus c. Let's take a look at b. We have the integral of sine x times secant to the eighth power of x dx. So again, we're looking for this to be the integral of some function of u with that u prime somewhere outside the function. So I'm thinking this to the power of eight can be our main function. But secant and sine don't go together well in terms of derivatives. Take a minute, pause the video, and see if you can figure out how to finish this one out. And then we'll try it together. Perhaps you recalled that secant was actually 1 over cosine of x. So we can rewrite this integral as the integral of sine x all over cos to the eighth of x dx. And now we're in much better shape. So we're looking for a u that's inside a function and a u prime that's outside. And remember, these, this u prime might be off by a constant. In fact, it will almost always be off by a constant. So let's let u, let's let u be cos of x. Okay, well then du is negative sine x dx. And that's a common way of, of writing your du. Instead of going du dx and then multiplying up by dx, Oftentimes in u substitution, you just write du equals negative sine x dx. So just to be aware of, of that notation, it's very commonly used. Okay, solve this for dx. dx is then du over negative sine x, and plug in right there for dx. So this gives us a new integral. When we do that, note that the sine x's will cancel out with each other. So what we'll be left with is a negative out front, and then we have du over u to the eighth. 
so a much simpler integral once we do the substitution. Okay, well now we'll use the power rule for integrals, so let's rewrite this as uh, u to the negative 8 du. And remember when we go to, to evaluate an integral like this, you add 1 to the power and then divide by that new power. So we have negative u to the negative 7, I added 1, all over negative 7 plus c. Okay, well these negatives will cancel out. This gives 1 7th. Um, I'll write this as 1 over u to the 7th plus c. But remember that u was actually cosine of x. So you want to substitute this in. Uh, you want to do a back substitution. Anytime you do u substitution, at the end you always have to go back. Unless we're doing a definite integral, in which case there's some ways to look at that as an exception. So we have 1 over 7 cos to the 7th of x plus c. Well, that's a perfectly fine answer, but we could be even more succinct and write this as secant to the 7th of x over 7 plus c. Which it kind of makes sense to do this, considering the original integral was given in terms of secant.